Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Real Life Fisherman. We're going to do a uh, kind of a special how-to video today. Uh, we're going to do boat battery wiring basics. This is like a very basic dual battery system. So we're going to go over today all the stuff that I would recommend and how I would uh, recommend running a, a boat battery wiring system. Um, there's going to be several different variations. Um, this is a very common one, one that I would recommend if you're rewiring your boat to uh, run something like this. You're going to have a few variations again uh, and different setups on different boats are going to be different. But uh, this is a very basic uh, generalization of a dual battery system and uh, boat wiring. So uh, it's out of the boat and you know, it's not exactly to spec or anything uh, as far as uh, links and runs and stuff like that. It's going to be different. Uh, we'll, we'll go into all of that. But this would be like up at the dash right here with your switch panel uh, or switches. I have two different style switches, a regular toggle and a lighted switch. Um, the fuse panel and uh, this is uh, ground bus up at the, up at the dash. And then the battery switch and the uh, power and negative bus would be at the stern at the back. Um, and then, of course, the batteries would be at the stern as well in the back. Um, so we're we'll just going to go over it and uh, show you guys how this is done and maybe give you a little better understanding of boat battery wiring um, and uh, help you guys out. Hey, and if this video helps you out, or you found it informative please uh, like it and if you haven't already please subscribe to the channel so we're gonna start at the uh, at the back here or at the bottom in this scenario here um, which is the batteries it's your the base of the whole system of course so uh, you're gonna have a cranking battery uh, for most standard uh, sometimes boat manufacturers will put in two cranking batteries uh, but uh, again, I would recommend switching over to a deep cycle for your house battery or your second battery. Um, that way you can run uh, for long periods of time. Uh, crank batteries are designed to crank and uh, discharge quickly uh, and recharge quickly, where a deep cycle is designed to drain slowly and uh, takes a longer, deeper charge to recharge it. But uh, that's what you want when you're out there on the water running things without your engine running. You want it to drain slowly um, and you just have more of a capacity or a run time with the deep cycle. So most standard crank batteries are a group 24. Um, it's going to depend on your size motor on how many cranking amps and you know the rating of it. Um, and then the uh, deep cycle um, Standard would be a, a group 27. You can get a 24 if you already have a 24 tray um, or a 29 or a 31. I just recently upgraded uh, on my boat. I recently upgraded to a group 27 cranking battery and a group 31 house battery. And uh, I actually ran a battery isolator and I have a similar system in my boat with the same switch. But uh, I have that video on the channel if you want to check that out. I have a ton of other battery wiring videos on the channel um, or several other battery wiring videos on the channel. Um, so check those out if you want some more information. Again, this is just a kind of a basic out of the boat wiring set setup. Um, so yeah, there's, that covers our batteries. Now the wiring on them. So you're going to wire the positive of battery one to position one on the battery switch. So position one here, or post one, that would be your cranking battery. And the positive of battery two to position two on the battery switch. And post number two, position two. Then you're going to have a negative jumper that connects both uh, negatives of both batteries. So they're sharing a negative. And then also the negative is going to jump up to your negative bus bar here. Um, and then the output on the output side of the battery selector switch uh, you're going to have everything on the boat that requires power off of this, stemmed off of this. The output here, this is where you would have the, the main power there. You want to put your main engine uh, positive on the output 
If you have a kicker motor, you want to put that on the output. Um, the, uh, the boat or dash power that's running up, uh, you can even have that on the output. Um, just don't stack too many uh, terminals on the output uh, of, of on any stud. Uh, negative or positive you don't want to do more than you know three or four ring terminals uh, on the battery or on the selector switch and that's a good reason to come over to a, a bus bar what this allows you to do is to uh, have a main power basically a junction that you can then run powers off to whatever you want in the in the back of the boat um, normally where this would be, you can also have, find these up under the dash as well um, instead of a fuse block. Um, basically anything you attach here to all these different points uh, would need a inline fuse rated for whatever the device you're going to power is needing. So you would, you would uh, hook that up there and run an inline fuse for your downrigger or a circuit breaker to your downrigger whatever you want uh, to have this powered off of just saves you from having to hook a bunch of terminals up to your battery switch or directly to your battery. Uh, same thing with the negative. Uh, all your negatives would just run to this. Um, and again, this is all there in the back. Um, would recommend running a 20 amp or a 30 amp uh, circuit breaker on your run for your dash power, uh, either from the battery switch or from the negative but or from the uh, from the positive bus bar here, this is just acting as a jumper to go to the what would be under the dash. So then going up to the dash, you can get a fuse distribution block right here or fuse block. This one here allows you to have 12 different devices fused on here, um, and then. You can even get one, which I would recommend you getting one with a negative bus on the fuse block itself. So above here, there would be a bunch of spots for you to terminate your, uh, your negative, um, your ground right up here. Um, in that case, you would just run a, uh, a wire like this po power wire is ran here. You would run uh, one from the negative and join here instead of how I have it over here on this uh, negative uh, little bus or uh, circuit board here. You could also use a negative bus like this up here in place of that. Um, this is just what I happen to have on hand right here. So this is where all the negatives for the dash would be terminated here. So when you're running your, uh, when you're running your main powers and stuff like that, I would recommend using uh, four gauge is pretty standard. 4 gauge marine grade wire, uh, I, I always recommend running anchor wire, it's the best in the industry, um, but there's a lot of other manufacturers, just make sure it's marine grade uh, wiring. I like to color uh, code the, the wiring, but uh, it is acceptable, you can run black wiring here, I would just recommend running red heat shrinks on the end, um, kind of helps people. Uh, come behind you or yourself or anybody know okay that's that's positive you know just kind of helps you know black and red helps keep it that way um, but uh, yeah four gauge uh, wire for your main runs from the battery to the switch and from the switch to the uh, bus bars um, and then you can run uh, this is eight gauge here you can run that up that's uh, good, or you can run, you know, six. Uh, from here, you would then step down, uh, think of it like a main trunk, and then you step down to branches, and the branches can be smaller depending on what you're running them to, um, like a, uh, a bilge pump or an aerator or lights or a VHF or a fish finder. Everything can be powered off of this. Uh, main and you can step down to a, a smaller gauge there so um, again run a, a 20 or 30 amp breaker going up to the dash just in case anything were to happen here that's going to pop and it's going to uh, you know 
not come back any further, not go through the switch and go to anything else, the engine or anything like that. Um, so uh, from here, again, you would put in whatever um, fuse, the appropriate size fuse for the device that you're trying to power up. Um, for today, we're just having some LEDs here. Um, these LEDs represent whatever that device is. It doesn't matter. The LED is just something that we could show here that will let you know, hey, it's got power. It doesn't have power. You can see it turn on. You can see it turn off. Um, so, again, the battery power is going from the battery to the switch, and then you can divert through the switch. I think the switches are on right now. So we can go to battery one. Now everything's powered up. This is hot. This is hot. And so we have, and then the switches, of course, are on. So we can turn those off here, here. So power's going up here. Through right here is the main power coming through this fuse panel. And then uh, this side of the fuse is hot. And if this fuse is good, this side of the fuse is hot. And that's going up to the switch. And then this is a simple toggle switch on off. Uh, there's, you know, all, there's several dif different switches. Uh, this is the most basic one, just an on off toggle switch. So you got power going in, power going out to the light and you flip the power, connects power into the switch, turns on the device, which is light. Um, this one here is just a little bit different. This is an on off switch. Uh, there's momentary switches, there's on-off-on switches. Uh, we won't get into all that wiring. This is just a basic wiring video. Um, but this one is a lighted switch. You'll find that a lot because a lot of uh, boat manufacturers and stuff like that, they want you to know that you've left something on. So let's say, for instance, you turn your bilge pump on or your live well pump on. Uh, you have a light on the switch when it's turned on letting you know that that is actually powered up. So the only difference with that switch as opposed to the regular toggle switch is this switch has a power coming in, a power going out, but it also has a ground that connects from the switch to the ground bus there at the dash or your common ground up there at the, at the dash. Um, that allows the light in the switch itself to actually turn on. Um, that ground is just for the light in the switch. So that's really the only difference there with that. We're gonna turn these switches on here just so I can go over the battery switch itself. So uh, again, this is all hot now. Uh, you wanna shut this off. It shuts off. You wanna switch to battery two now. Turn it to battery two. Now everything's being powered from battery two. Battery one, your crank battery is sitting there not being used. And when you want to leave for the day, you just switch it on back over to battery one. Start your motor and go home. You don't have to worry if you have any battery juice left to start it, or you don't have to worry about starting your motor every you know, 30 minutes to an hour so you know you have uh, your battery charged. You can just run everything off of this one and then save that one for just starting the motor. Um, it's a good system, very safe system. Uh, if that battery were to go bad on you, uh, sometimes you don't know your battery's going bad. Uh, you get out there, you don't want to ruin your day by putting it back on the trailer or by not being able to get it off the trailer. Um, you can crank from this battery or you can combine them on one and two. And now both these batteries are in parallel and you're basically going to jumpstart that battery with this battery. Um, you can charge both these batteries by running on one and two, but I don't recommend running like that all the time. Um, it's not really recommended to run around on one and two constantly. Um, so, uh, whatever battery you are switched to when your engine is running, that is the battery you are charging, uh, unless you have a battery isolator like I just installed. Um, so battery two again. Uh, also guys, make sure 
when you're switching the battery switch around that you do not have the engine running. You want the engine off before you change battery positions because in between here and there and off or switching is uh, off. So the, that power from your engine, your alternator, your stator has nowhere to go and you can cause a voltage spike. So it's recommended you turn your battery or your engine off before switching your battery. Also you wanna, with uh, modern electronics like our high-end fish finders we run nowadays, uh, you don't wanna just shut the power off to the fish finder. You wanna let the fish finder actually power down like you're shutting down a computer. Uh, so you wanna power down your fish finder before you turn your battery switch. It's a good habit to get into. Um, just shutting the power off is like ripping the cord out of the wall from your uh, computer. It's not something you want to do. Okay guys, well just to recap, again, dual battery system, battery selector switch, negative bus, positive bus, uh, dash power harness or dash power, uh, having a, a circuit breaker here, uh, going up to the dash, uh, fuse block, and then from the fuse block here, you go to your switches. And then from the switches to the light in this case, or de whatever device it is you're powering up there. Um, and then you also from the device, the negative is gonna go to the negative um, bus up at the dash. Um, and then uh, again, the battery selector switch can run everything from either position one, position two, or one and two. And it also kills everything with it switched to off. So uh, that's a quick recap. If you guys are looking to get into more uh, in-depth like trolling motor wiring and stuff like that, I do have a video on that, on how to wire up batteries for trolling motors in parallel and series in 24 and 36 volt so be sure to check out that video and uh, again guys if this video helped you out please give it a thumbs up and uh, subscribe if you haven't already and thanks for watching and uh, i'll see you guys on the next one